Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week I'm going to cover uh, some of the changes that happened with the Server 2.2.1 update. Uh, I didn't cover it earlier because I thought uh, it would be just kind of pretty simple uh, to navigate around, but I have gotten a number of questions about some of the changes with the SSL certificates and things like that. So I thought I would do a, uh, a quick update on just a few of those changes. Like I said, for many of you, you may already know these, but I'll just point out the different changes and things that happened with this last particular update. So let me start with uh, one of the first updates, and that is the change that happened with the SSL certificates. Uh, you'll notice in uh, the previous screencasts I've done on SSL certificates that they used to be in this area right here under the server app. And it used to have what uh, certificate you were using, and then you would do the updates right on this screen and it would take you through that. Now with the update, what happened was they moved the certificates to its own service on the outside right here. In fact, let me just click on that. And you can see that now we have uh, our own interface here for certificates without having to uh, drill into the actual uh, server area to make that happen. Now most of the things are the same here, but let me just kind of take you through uh, a basic tour. Uh, you have your settings here where you can do your secure services using, and what happens is you can pick uh, a certificate that you want to use, or you can pick a custom uh, configuration. And so in that configuration, a little drop down pops down, and then you can select from here uh, what you want to have uh, SSL available on. As you can see, I've got it available on everything except for messages because I didn't set it up on messages, but I could actually make that change if I wanted to just by coming here, changing it to the OD, saying OK, and uh, now everything is set and it did it as a custom. If I didn't want to do it that way, I wanted it available on all services, all I could do is come here and actually select it, which is what you saw happen here, that once I made it available on all of the services, then it fills it in right in this area right here. But it gives you the option to customize it based on each of the services. You also have your different certificates here. Uh, again, this is the root certificate that I've got. This is the uh, open directory uh, certificate that is trusted. In fact, if I just click this, there's a little edit gear down here that allows me to say view certificate certificate and it gives me the information you can see this is certificate is marked as trusted for the local host uh, because I've uh, already set that up and because it's a, a local open directory it's already come in as trusted so it gives you kind of all of your information on your certificate that you can see here if I wanted to renew the certificate I could click the renew button and once I do that it would then uh, renew the certificate for me and extend it out and you can see I've got five months on this one before it expires it'll start to give me warnings on that so that I can renew the certificate and you want to make sure that you do that because once you stop renewing your certificate then what's going to happen is is uh, you'll start to have some of your uh, all your SSL things will start to fail uh, you can see here that it shows the time frame you know I started this one in 2011 it expires in September 2013 so it's usually about every two years or so that you'll update these all right let me just click done now you also have uh, in here uh, the ability to if I just click the plus button here I can get a trusted certificate if I want to and that's where I would get a certificate from an outside entity uh, that I would have to uh, order. I'll show you how that works. I can create a certificate identity where I just create a new one and that's kinda like the certificate that we created up front that created the ones that you see up here. Uh, or I can import a certificate identity if I have got the information, I'm changing over servers and I want to import one that I've already got and that would allow me to put those things in there. Now let me just click on get a trusted certificate just to show you the process. It uh, gives you a nice little wizard and this will look very similar to what we did when the certificates were located in the server. Right? If I click next here you put in your host name and all your information. Once you're done you click next and you get a, a screen with a code that you go and paste in. And uh, you know I can set this up. Let me just put some information in here. I gotta put in a contact email address. and uh, organization, you know, department, uh, I'm just going to make something up here. Uh, I'm going to put, uh, you know, just something else, California or whatever. And then what will happen is when I click next, what it does is it's going to generate a code for me that I would then use to purchase a certificate. So this would be the, the information here. I would copy all of this down here. And then with that, then I would then send that code off to uh, the actual uh, place where I'm buying the certificate and then once they get that that's what they use to verify the server they would send it back to me uh, so I'm just click finish here and I'm actually going to you can see that it shows pending right here uh, with some of the information that I put in 
and if you want we can view the signing request if you want and you can see there's nothing in here okay because I don't have any certificate files once I get those from the vendor I drag them into this area here and the certificate request I can save or edit uh, the one that I got and so that's how I would set that up it kind of gives it a uh, holding place here for this particular certificate again if I don't want it I can just get rid of it by deleting it says you sure you want to do that yes I do and so then I will delete that pending uh, certificate from the server and now it's not there anymore so just kind of a, a quick overview on how you would go about uh, managing your SSL certificates in this new server update you can see where that change happened so that's one of the major changes that happened that'll help you through that part uh, other things that were added uh, obviously the caching uh, server was added and I showed you how to set that up in my tutorial on uh, on the caching server I actually uh, walked through all those steps so you can take a look at uh, that uh, tutorial if you want to get more information on how to make this work uh, another change that took place was in actually time machine which is nice and convenient in that uh, time machine now has a little more information uh, in the original one it was pretty much just what drive do you want to use for your backup set it up throw the switch and you're done uh, now you have two tabs here you've got one for your destinations and so you can see where uh, the backups are taking place it gives you the volumes and where it's at it creates this shared items and then backups folder uh, you can obviously add another spot for time machine backups if you want where if you have multiple drives and you want to have two options for people uh, maybe one drive's gotten full or you want to have one drive per computer you can set it up that way but then it also gives you a nice option here on backups to have the ability to see what computers are backing up uh, uh, to your server what their latest backups are uh, at this point it says unknown because my computers uh, aren't online at this point and then the total size of the backup so it allows you to manage it a little better and uh, it just gives you the the ability then to be able to have a better management system uh, I know there's a little uh, editing pencil here uh, that allows you to kind of get more uh, information on this particular backup and you can also go view the SharePoint right here it'll take you right to the place uh, this location here where the backup is it'll just actually bring that right up so if I just click this here you can see that right inside it says here's where the backup is here's all the information you notice it took me right into file sharing and I can see then uh, how my backup uh, area is doing and where that's at so it's kinda nice it kinda just gives you uh, the ability to get a little bit more information on your backups and to monitor them a little better a couple other little updates and changes happened. There were th some things with bugs that they fixed. Uh, also on the wiki area, they updated the uh, actual uh, wiki web page to be uh, more compliant with uh, retina displays so that it looks better. Uh, but overall, that gives you kind of just a nice overview of what that 2.2.1 update did so that if you're confused from the prior uh, screencast, now you know what things have changed and you know where to find some of the information that you might be looking for. Well, that's all I have uh, for this week. I'll be uh, back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.